Hey guys, it's Paul from Online Tax Academy, and in today's lesson, we're going to be doing the full version of Isn't She Lovely by Stevie Wonder. We're going to be doing it in the original key, including both those harmonica solos. All right, let's get started. <laughs> So, link down in the description below, I've got a full transcription for both alto and tenor saxophones, or of course if you're playing barry or soprano saxophones as well, along with the recording of me playing this so you can play along with me. And I've also got a backing track where I'm not playing and you're just left to play this solo by yourself. If you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on the rest of this series and future videos. So Stevie Wonder wrote this song in E major, which for altos is in D flat major and tenor sax is in F sharp major. Now these are quite unusual keys, but an awful lot of pop music is written in that key, particularly guitarists, because an E major chord and A major chords, they're very easy to play on the guitar, which puts us into C sharp major and F sharp major or D flat major and all these nastier keys. Now if you're a more experienced sax player and you're used to playing in keys such as D flat major or F sharp major, then feel free to use the timestamp to skip ahead to where the song starts and you can get stuck in trying to play along. But if you're not as experienced in these keys, then I'm going to give you a couple of warm-up exercises which are going to really help you so that when you go to start playing this song, it's not going to seem quite as daunting. So first of all, you can literally just start by playing the scale up and down. I would start in the middle of the range and just do like a one octave scale like this. <laughs> and make your way back down. And then just try improvising your way around that scale. So gradually moving up, step back down, kind of explore the scale, kind of snake your way up and then make your way back down. And what you're doing is getting your fingers moving between uh, these seven notes like this. <laughs> When that starts to feel really comfortable, it's going to be much easier when you start playing this song. Another tip is, as you're playing these notes, really think the note names of this key. So for example, when I'm playing F sharp, which we normally call this note F sharp, I'm going to be thinking G flat when I'm thinking in D flat major. When I'm reading the notes and I see an A and I know it's an A flat, I automatically go to an A flat or G sharp rather than maybe like an A sharp, which would be a B flat. Now the fingering charts are on the side as well. So if you're ever not quite sure of how to play a note, you can always pause the video and you'll see a diagram of how to play the notes. Along with doing the major scale, another really useful scale, which most of this song is made up of, is the major pentatonic scale. And the way we make a major pentatonic scale is you take the first, second, third, fifth and sixth notes from the full major scale, and that gives you your pentatonic and getting your fingers used to moving between those notes. Because we've got a couple of gaps here between the third and the fifth and between the sixth going back to the one at the top, it's worth getting your fingers used to moving over those gaps by improvising around those five notes, kind of snaking your way between, just like you did with the major scale, but now just with the pentatonic scale. So very briefly, something like... <laughs> Now in part one, we spoke briefly about the structure, but just a quick recap, we're gonna have a four bar introduction, and then we've got a 16 bar structure, which is what, it goes round and round. There's no real verse or chorus or bridge here, it's just all chorus, basically. The first two choruses, he's singing. Third chorus, he's playing on the harmonica. Fourth chorus, he's singing again. And for the fifth and sixth choruses, he's doing the harmonica solo. Now on that last chorus, he goes pretty high on the harmonica. For the alto sax, I've transcribed it so you're going to be going up into the altissimo range, up to a really high B-flat. If you're not experienced with the altissimo though, you can put these phrases down an octave. So as ever, when you're practicing this, I'd really recommend using YouTube's playback speed settings and try slowing it down first of all, just as you're getting your fingers comfortable, particularly in this tricky key. You can do that by clicking on the settings wheel and then clicking on playback speed and then you've got a number of options uh, going all the way down to 0.25 which would be like quarter speed.
Now I'd really recommend checking out the original track and listening to Stevie Wonder sing this song and that harmonica solo, and listen to it lots. The best way to learn these more complex kind of triplety rhythms is to listen lots and lots so you can sing along. And once you've got a nice template in your mind, in your musical memory, then when you go to practice, you've got a definite thing to aim for and it makes things a lot easier. And of course, don't forget to download the free backing track and the example track of me playing this so you can listen to that as well to really get to know this. All right, that's it for this week. Don't forget next week, we'll be looking at how to improvise and make up your own solos over this amazing song. All right, see you next week.